Thanks so much, Arslan. And yes, go who's. Um, Wahoo -wah. Wah, that's right. Uh, I feel a little overdressed. Uh, I don't know if I have my street cred. I don't have my puffy jacket. I don't have my hoodie. Let's see if I can earn my street cred back in about uh, the next 10 minutes. So hey, everyone. My name is Don Vu. I'm the chief data officer at Northwestern Mutual. I actually started my career as a data engineer before it was called data engineering. I wrote PL SQL scripts. I wrote uh, Perl. And I did that for a company called uh, Scient. It was a startup that built startups. It built the first Chase.com. It built uh, Six Degrees, an early social media network. And then I eventually ended up at MLB Advanced Media. So MLB Advanced Media is the digital arm of Major League Baseball. Um, along the way, we built the best video streaming platform in the world, spun that off and called it BAM Tech Media, sold it to Disney for $3.5 billion, and now it's the back end of Disney+, Plus, Hulu, and ESPN+, Plus, over 160 million subscribers. So why do I tell you all that? So I've learned a bunch of stuff along the way. Um, I've definitely understood how data can be, and data platforms can propel a business strategy. I saw that firsthand in a lot of different places. And uh, I also saw that the problems in data aren't necessarily always the same, but they oftentimes rhyme. And we'll talk a little bit about how we, we've been tackling our challenges at Northwestern Mutual and solving them with the Lake House. And maybe some of the things that we're doing will resonate with y'all. Well, I forgot to mention that I also had a little bit of time at WeWork. If, you're, uh, if you want to know a little bit more about WeWork, there's a couple documentaries you can check out. If you're lucky, I'll tell you a little bit more of the, the backstory uh, over an adult beverage at the bar as well. So cool. So after leaving WeWork, I was really looking for my next challenge. And I wasn't looking for a company that was older than Major League Baseball, but I found it in Northwestern Mutual. Um, what really drew me to Northwestern Mutual was, uh, first off, the business scale of the organization. So we're a $34 billion plus company. Um, in comparison with MLB, as an example, that's where MLB is a $10 billion a year company. So I was really drawn, uh, at, at the, drawn toward the potential to have a massive business impact. Because we all know that scale really, really matters when it when you deal with things like analytics and AI and machine learning. The other thing that drew me to Northwestern Mutual is really just the mission of the organization. And it's really to secure the financial future for families. And that's something I actually experienced firsthand. So when I was working, working at Major League Baseball, I had my daughter. She's now 10 years old, Evie. And one of the things I was most concerned about when I first had her was making sure that she'd be OK if, in the unlikely event that something terrible happened to me. And so I be, actually became a Northwestern Mutual client before I ever joined the firm. And then when I joined the firm, um, it was really clear to me in some of my very first uh, interactions with some of our advisors what the true opportunity of Northwestern Mutual was and how data could really propel that. And I found that out firsthand by my uh, advisor. So my advisor, like I said before, I was already a Northwestern Mutual client. I joined uh, in March of 2020, so the start of the pandemic. And my advisor actually called me. And he said, and we'll call him Bob. We're, we're, we're blurring out his face to protect his identity. But Bob called me up to say, hey, Don, don't worry about the markets. I know it plunged 30% the other day. I know they pulled a circuit breaker. But Northwestern Mutual is built for this. We're rock solid. You have nothing to worry about. And I said, Bob, I actually thought you were going to call me. But I thought you were going to call me to congratulate me for my new job. And he said, oh, really? What's your new job? I said, I'm the chief data officer of Northwestern Mutual. So it was actually interesting. And I told the same story to my board. And it's a true story. And it, it really galvanized for me like what, what the opportunity was and how far we had to go in order to truly empower our advisors and our entire holistic digital ecosystem to have more engaging client experience and a, and a more seamless one using data. And so that became even more readily apparent to me in my first week. And so this is uh, the whiteboard that I had in my office the first week. I had to blur a bunch of stuff out um, to you know, hide our proprietary secrets. But basically what ended up happening was we had a bunch of uh, folks come into the room. I would ask them about the data ecosystem. They, you know, everyone would draw a different bubble, hence all the different uh, sorts of colors that you see on the board. But what we really saw there, it was a, it, there was a massive challenge slash opportunity for us. There was over 1,800 production databases. We had 700 plus applications. It was a wide variety of legacy systems. I dealt with some legacy systems at baseball, but this was kind of next level. Um, and so it was a, a massive challenge opportunity, whichever word you want to pick. But it was something that I was really confident in because, again, the problems in data aren't the same, but they rhyme. I'd previously seen this notion of fragmented, hard to govern data in the past. Similarly, I'd worked in organizations that had kind of an incomplete view of the customer. Obviously, that's something we wanted to address as well. And I think most pertinently, and Arslan touched on this, there were a lot of tactical data solutions that weren't really connected to business problems. And that's something that we really needed to remedy. And so we implemented a data strategy that was built on a few different pillars. The first was that we knew we had to modernize our, our platforms and build foundational capabilities. Our data team just wasn't agile, agile enough for the business, and we needed to have 
uh, an infrastructure that could skate to the puck. Secondly, we wanted to really hone in on the notion of customer centricity. I think almost every organization in the world has become more and more customer centric as this whole notion of B2B has kind of gone away, B2B to C, or even just a direct relationship with the customer is just even more pervasive. For uh, customer centricity, we really thought about it from a bottoms up and top down perspective. So from a bottoms up perspective, a client 360 that aggregates data from all across the enterprise, all put into one trusted place. And then from a top down perspective, leveraging predicted customer lifetime value to optimize all of our touch points with our clients across both human and digital touch points. And then finally, we wanted to make sure that we built a data strategy that was driven by business objectives. We have a really um, uh, opinionated point of view at Northwestern Mutual that we're the, going to be the best at, financial, at serving our, financial, uh, our clients' financial needs, using our protect and prosper or risk and investment, uh, the portfolio. And so that's something we knew we had to support with our data strategy. And so this is kind of like a high level, like a maturity curve. Um, this is more of like an enterprise view. I think like a lot of y'all have probably experienced firsthand. Across the enterprise, we have some pockets of the business that are a bit more advanced with respect to uh, the maturity curve, going from descriptive to predictive to prescriptive analytics. And there's others that are just kind of like still stuck in Excel. But holistically, on, uh, across the board, if you look at our enterprise, we knew we had to start off by building this foundation of our data platform. We would scale for net foundational capabilities. Now we're really talking about federating these capabilities via kind of a data mesh philosophy. And then ultimately, we really need to scale our strategic AI portfolio. This is the general curve that we've been on. And, and really, our goal is to have, again, massive financial impact for our organization. And so how does Lakehouse fit in? So data, Databricks Lakehouse is really the foundation of our data ecosystem and what we've called our unified data platform. So this is kind of a genericized version. There's probably no, nothing like really crazy or secret here. Um, like a lot of other companies, we have a variety of sources on the left-hand side, a, a variety of ways in which we ingest and land that data. We, of, co of course, um, run compute on top of it, and then it gets uh, activated through a lot of different ways. I think a couple of the main features that uh, maybe I'll call out that really drew us to selecting Databricks in this architecture is first and foremost having the same storage for descriptive and predictive analytics. So having like been around for a while and seeing kind of you know being on uh, you know Oracle OLTP used in a certain way that it wasn't meant to be used for for an analytical purpose, then moving to these big appliances that were basically refrigerators, then using Athena and, and the various uh, cloud solutions. I was really um, struck by the way that Databricks really sets up one layer of storage for both descriptive and predictive analytics use cases. Um, the second thing is that we really wanted to have a paved road for governance and compliance. So working in a very highly regulated industry, we knew that we needed to be uh, governance, have governance and compliance as business accelerants and not something that would actually weigh down uh, time to value for our business. And so we really appreciated the way that we could have governance and compliance like built into the platform and facilitate um, our teams delivering for the business. And then finally, we love that the platform was AI machine learning first. Again, obviously, we're going to have to transform data. It's not just land it and leave it alone. You have to do feature engineering and things of that nature. But moving back and forth between data stores was something that we wanted to minimize. And we really felt like this architecture let us, again, get speed to business value as quickly as possible. And so how are we using it? So what we really wanted to do when we looked at our um, data analytics and AI portfolio was look at for the business, biggest possible impact that we could have. And so Northwestern Mutual, certainly one of the key things that we're known for is life insurance. We're the number one life insurance company in the, in the, in the country. Underwriting and the way that we actually price risk is a really key use case for us. And we're, it's, it's hard because we're actually demonstrably great at what we do with our human underwriter. They're, they're leveraging methodologies that have been around for decades and are, are tried and true and proven. So we had the challenging task of actually trying to exceed human performance, or at least match it to start with underwriting uh, innovation. And so we have machine learn, learning models that are actually replicating our underwriter's decisions at well over 98% of accuracy. Our aspiration is actually to exceed that performance and to actually not just try to predict the underwriter's decision, but the actually mortality event itself. And that's something we're on track to do as well. And the traction we have for this body of work is, uh, is remarkable. And I think it was certainly accelerated by COVID. So we've gone more than 4x what we've had for underwriting decisions through machine learning in the last couple of years. And that's a, a really amazing traction. The next opportunity that we have that we're really leaning into is this notion of a next best action. So 
we have almost 10,000 financial advisors, and if you add their staff, that's well over 20. And the way that they actually engage with our clients in tandem with our digital products, our digital apps, and our website, and things of that nature, and our marketing efforts, we really believe that having a holistic conversation um, powered by humans that are actually uh, coordinated with those digital, digital touch points towards the next best action is going to be a key differentiator for us. And finally, uh, underpinning that in kind of a, a north star that helps guide it all is this notion of customer lifetime value. So predicting based on all the signals that we know about an individual, what their lifetime value is going to be over decades, which then helps guide the next best action, that, that's really been key for us as well. And it's been a really exciting journey. And when we're done, obviously, we won't have to blur out Bob's name. Um, he'll be able to be empowered by this incredible data and analytics platform uh, and all the different tools we have for him. So thanks for listening for a bit today. Hopefully, some of these uh, things actually rhyme with the challenges that you're having uh, today. And uh, hope you all have a great day. Take care. Thank you.